In the novel, Mon hasn't decided what to do with John when John takes it upon himself to run off um, to the lighthouse to this remote part of England. So there's a small difference on what happens between the movie and the book. In the movie, Mon decides to send John away. In the book, John just runs away entirely on his own. John stays there quietly for a few weeks um, while the interest dies down in him. Mon basically has a chance at this point to let the whole fiasco fade away and swallow his pride and, and get over it. But for someone who supposedly puts happiness above all else, he grows jealous of the solitude John enjoys or is still bitter about losing Thomas or Bernard or Helmholtz or some sort of combination because he winds up seeking revenge against the innocent savage or, or allowing the harassment of the savage to go on unabated. I set this painting up in basically like a courtroom scene. We've got some British flags here in the middle to remind us that we are in London. Civilization in the story is based in London. We've got some skeletons of large fish up here, um, an aquarium with live fish this time around, unlike in painting number four where Bernard had a aquarium full of dead fish. Just a little symbolism that even in the 26th century where everybody, everyone belongs to everyone else and all the cases are equal, those at the top are, are still gonna have small luxuries that nobody else gets to enjoy. This is Bernard being dragged away by the police, um, which I mentioned earlier, visually protesting. Mond is slamming the gavel down in the middle of the painting, which of course he doesn't physically do in the novel, but made for the perfect symbolism. Here is poor John imagining the island paradise. He thinks and hopes and thinks Mond is going to send him to as his punishment, but obviously has a lighthouse sticking up out of the top um, with a light shining out over the island he he thinks he's going to for a bit of foreshadowing there this is helmholtz watson in the lower left like i mentioned earlier who i never painted until the tenth painting because he really doesn't show up in the novel until deep in the second half in the 1980 movie he's throughout his character appears in the entire first half and is very active in the whole film. And he's a very, very likable character, in my opinion. Helmholtz is that person who... He's a very honest and trustworthy character. He aids John in the riot. Um, and is kind of the opposite of... Uh, kind of has the character opposite of Bernard's kind of petty jealousy even though him and Bernard are actually good friends. Um, Helmholtz is that person, if you've ever been lucky in your life, lucky enough in your life to have one who takes a liking to you for some reason or another and decides to go out of their way to help you out of the kindness of their heart for no other reason than they believe in you and, and what you stand for and them helping you become happy makes them happy. Those kind of people are so rare and so special and are, in my opinion, the true bringers of happiness, uh, a million times more so than a congressman or a lobbyist who's paid to say the right things to the right people to protect their own best interest and keep everything the way it's always been. Yet Mustafa Mon, world controller, the supposed activate, uh, advocate of universal happiness and selflessness is sending away one of these truly selfless special people to a miserable island climate forever as punishment for wanting to continue to be selfless and special and for being a role model for others who are selfless and special. There's a bit of a lesson there, I think, that even in the 26th century where happiness is the new God, 
indefinite power still corrupts indefinitely, and that that doesn't change no matter what. Here are the ghosts of um, John's youth. Sorry, here is the ghost of John's youth with Linda and her old boyfriend from the reservation, Pope, kind of watching the scene unfold. I also have ghosts of other drowned alphas up here who were banished from the mainland and drowned trying to swim back to civilization or, or whatever happened. Um, but ghosts of other alphas banished from the mainland are kind of what they symbolize up there at the top. As with most Capitol buildings, I put in some hand-painted murals around the courtroom. As you can see, here's the lighthouse up here in the upper right, right here. They ha I have John here alone on the beach, trying to be by himself and in peace and, and away from society, but I also have the other case all slowly walking through the murals towards John the Savage, which um, is a portent of the final painting, the conclusion of Brave New World. Like I mentioned earlier, the savage living alone and getting away from civilization rubs Mustafa Rahman the wrong way. And Mr. Happiness, Mr. Forgiveness, hires one of the most critically acclaimed comedic filmmakers to make a mockumentary of the savage to prove to society and himself that he was always in charge of John the entire time, even though nothing could be further from the truth. Thank you all for watching um, this 11th video of the 11th Brave New World painting of my 12 painting 2018 series. I am the artist Ian Young. Please come back and watch the final video, the conclusion to Brave New World on painting number 12, South by Southwest. Um, it's a pretty dark painting. Uh, it's a pretty sad way to end the series. The final title, though, is South by Southwest, the mockumentary and the electro shredding of the lighthouse footage. Thanks for watching again.